Good morning, folks. NASA released this Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter data watching the end of GRAIL. You'll remember we reported them smashing the satellite into the lunar surface. I've linked a more detailed update here. You heard this before, discussing how extreme weather beyond just heat is the new norm. I've said for months this isn't the time to live near an ocean. After a moderate quake swarm last night and into this morning, Mount Loken erupted in Indonesia a few hours ago in a significant way. USGS has issued an unusual geological event warning in New Jersey for low-level ground shaking felt over a wide area. They won't qualify it as quaking, but they've pretty much ruled out everything else. I feel similar things in Ohio from time to time, but my wife just thinks I'm crazy. This is five days time and represents normal earthquake numbers for the Canary Islands. Then, a quake hit that was double the normal magnitude and set off hundreds of tremors over the last three days. Then all of a sudden, it stopped a few hours ago. We'll keep watch. Last update beneath our feet, when I say buoy air, I mean something like a reading showing a 65 foot wave that is not picked up by any other buoys, hits no ships, and reaches no land. The southern event near Papua New Guinea is legitimate and somewhat worrisome given the connections being made across the internet between these buoys and earthquakes. Checking our severe watch zones for the next 24 hours, X cyclone Tim could bring lightning to the Queensland coast. In Europe, the severity is on the colder side, massive low pressure cells driving Mediterranean moisture up to set blizzard conditions over much of the north. A new convergence will begin in the U.S. tonight in the heart of Texas and continue for a few days. Meanwhile, a massive low leaving the Pacific has the west coast covered pretty much from Alaska to Mexico and north of New England, the departing winter storm having a little chat with eastern Canada. Here are the rest of the global severe watch zones in macro scale. Be sure to check your local forecasts. Switching to space weather, we expected to see the solar wind stream from that southern coronal hole affect Earth mildly yesterday or today. Tough to tell if that's happened, but we can see the proton density was on the floor a day ago, began rising a bit, and sustained elevated levels around 1700 or 1800 UTC. Having just recovered from a magnetic storm, this was enough to set significant inductions with those time frames matching the solar wind metrics perfectly. The sunspots departing now did some major development since last night. I see multiple morphing delta spots and a major flare potential, but as I said, they are departing today. Looking at the umbral fields and coronal openings, I draw your attention to the left side, known as the sun's eastern limb. Can you tell that behind that curved protrusion is a sharp opening in the solar atmosphere? Using Stereo B to see what the Sun has in store for Earth just before it crests into our line of sight, we notice a massive coronal hole heading this way. This is the primary earthquake factor, and I know many of you have your eye on March 21st or 22nd for various reasons, and there is indeed a significant geocentric conjunction at that time. But when the alignments begin coming in multiples, is that same time I expect the massive coronal hole to face Earth. And while there is always the chance for a significant seismic event, the upticks in multiple occurrences we are tracking should return the end of March or into early April. We'll leave you with some shots of the sun from the past day. Eyes open. No fear at 6.35 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.